Do you have friends? Do you have friends who are, say, Polish or Italian? No, no. just Puerto Rican. Just Puerto Rican. Any of you have friends who are not a Puerto Rican? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, um, the group that me and Victor belong to, we have a Polish guy in, uh, named Butch, and he seemed to get along fine with us. And he's been with us about for two and a half years, and we're real nice friends. And uh, we get along very good. It's a question then of knowing someone, isn't that? Getting to know the guy personally, is that? Were you gonna, were you gonna say something? To uh, down uh, Connecticut, where I was before, most of my friends were Americans and Polish and Italians. I used to get along with them, and, and I think that was a good idea for them to get along with me, because that way we wouldn't have a lot of trouble or having fight or join up gangs, you know. So. For me, that was a good idea to get along with them. I used to go to school and uh, we used to respect each other and I used to get along with them. We never had any trouble at all with them. And the, uh, I think that's all I got to say about them. Guys. The, the disturbance in the uh, northwest side started by uh, this policeman that has tried to break up a game fight over here in Damon and Division. And then while trying to break up of, uh, the fight, as was said in the newspaper, one of the, one of the young guys pulled out a gun on him. So he just took, uh, shot, him, shot him in the legs. And then, you know, that, after that, you know, everything was nice again. But, and then they came and they let the, the dogs out, which bit a little kid. And that's when uh, it broke out right there. And then, you know, <coughs> everybody started fighting the cops. And, kept on like that for two days, three, three, three days. days. You know, thinking about cops, this is the thing now. If I say to you the word police, cop, what's your first reaction? When I say to you, cop, what's the first thing comes to your mind, anybody? Good guys. Good guys. What's your reaction? <laughs> leave. <laughs> I leave. You leave. What's yours, Jose? I get lost. <laughs> huh? I'll get lost. You get away. Yeah. Well, if I was to see a policeman, I think I'll go the other way. I was getting ready to fight some of the Polacks. I had, I had accidentally dropped a shotgun and shot my leg almost a year ago. And uh, this, so is fighting around this, this territory around here. So I feel, you know, that when I walk down the street, you know, I walk around this neighborhood just like a little part of Puerto Rico, like an island right around here. And uh, most of it from Division, most of the California around Kissy now, it's mostly Puerto Rican. So when you walk around this neighborhood, it's just like being in Puerto Rico, I guess. Because everybody knows mostly each other. This is an interesting point that Rafael just made. It's like you live on a little island. A little, is this the way you feel? That is, you have a certain uh, vector, you're going to say? feels like a home to us, you know. Our whole lives are here, you know. A lot of people that grew up here. Just, I don't know, we do anything for this neighborhood, you know. It's just, just us, that's all. What are, the, what are the boundaries of your world here in Chicago? What are your boundaries? Well, we got, uh, most of it is from uh, Ashland to around Kissy. And then from North to Augusta. And around here, just, uh, just like I said, it's just like a little island, and uh, everybody knows each other. You see people yelling out the window, hey, this and that, and uh, everybody, see, everybody knowing each other around here. You walk down the street, hey, you, you know, you walk behind, you know, you know that there's protection all over, you know. In case you be walking around, you get jumped by, uh, by, by some guys, you could always go, you know, and you, you could expect help from the other people. Because around here, uh, let's say Hadi gets jumped. Well, if Hadi gets jumped, he comes around here and we go, we go back to the neighborhood where he got jumped and we take down over there and make it back to our neighborhood. And so far on, this is the way we've been carrying on since I live around this neighborhood. And uh, me, myself, I've never got jumped yet. <laughs> this is interesting, right? You feel at home and you feel safe within the boundaries of this world. But what's your feeling once you leave it? Do you ever go out of it much? Well, uh, 
sometimes when you leave this neighborhood, uh, you, you, you're going to expect trouble. Because once you go past Augusta, there's a gang over there. You go past California, there's a gang over there. You go down Ashland, there's a gang over there. So, you know, when, when you get out of this neighborhood, you're bound to expect trouble if, you know, if you're a teenager. You know, because the teenage group, you know, they just come after you right there and then. They don't why? ask you no questions. Why? Why? Why would this be? Why? Huh? Why? Uh, it's just because, you know, we're Puerto Ricans and they ain't. So, you know, uh, they like to jump people and we like to jump people. So if they have, they come into our neighborhood. They come into our neighborhood, they have to be careful too. <laughs> just like we, we go into their neighborhood, you know. So it's a question of every group having its own territory. It's like uh, each, is, each one is a different country having its own territory. Yes. Well, do you ever uh, talk it over with leaders of other groups, of other gangs? Do you ever have talks with them? Do you ever meet them? Ever? Just on the battlefield. <laughs> on the battlefield? <laughs> oh, you mean when you draw up the rules, you mean? Do you meet them before to draw up rules? No, we just, we just go over there and if that's them, we jump them. That's all. Yeah. Well, whatever happens. But what, what about, uh, you never had any negotiation? like uh, peace talks? Oh, uh, I think well, last year we had a peace talk with the Playboys and a peace talk with the Gaylords, but... Um, Gaylords are Italian? Yes. And, and the peace, what are the other uh, ones? The, the Playboys, Playboys. Uh, they got... Different kind of mix. They mix. You know, well we talked to them, but the next week, you know, just didn't do no good. We was right back at it next week. Peace treaty is torn up. <laughs> and then, you know, when the peace treaty, you know what comes behind that. When it's torn up, you know what comes behind it. Has anybody of any heads of all the gangs in the city, different ones, you got the Gaylords, you got the Playboys, uh, another area, the Vice Lords, what's, what's your group's name? Uh, our group is well known as the Latin Kings. The Latin Kings. Well, do you ever have a general, you've never had a general uh, peace conference of all the groups in town together? Uh, like the United Nations. Well, sometimes uh, the, de the detached workers, uh, they get us together at the Y and try to make a treaty. There was one meeting when uh, all this disturbance was happening, mm -hmm. so they got uh, all the clubs together, you know. I, I didn't attend the meeting, but they told me they got all the clubs together, vice lords from the south side, from the north side, all over, you know. And they were supposed to sit down and talk, trying to stop all this, you know, confusion. So. I don't know too much about the meeting itself, but I know there was one in general, but it had to do with the disturbance, not really with the, you know, the oh, clubs. What do you, what do you think? Uh, so far we heard Vic and, and uh, Redfield, and anybody, feel free. I know they speak, uh, you, can, you, you kind of agree with what they're saying, don't you? Everybody else? Well, I'm thinking, uh, you tell about the, you know, the walls between the different groups because of the different uh, ethnic groups, different nationalities and everything. And how can this be overcome? What do you think? Hey, you got any ideas? Well, my idea is that I don't think it will never be overcome because that's the way it is and I think that's where it's going to stay. I don't see no... You know, maybe it could be overcome maybe for a couple of years, but then the next year it'll start right back up again. What do you think? Well, I don't know. I to me, this is uh, like a generation, you see? Like right now, we'll be fighting and all this, and there'll be little kids out in the street, you know? When we'll be getting married, you know, they'll be coming, growing up, you know, so they'll be, you know, taking our place. So I don't think we'll never finish because, to me, no two, two races could have the same thoughts, you know? They couldn't think the same or act the same. You think that after you get married, your little brothers will be coming up, and their little brothers will be coming up, and it'll be the same thing without any uh, peace. That's the way I think about it. Maybe in the future there might be some, which I don't know. But well, uh, Harry, do you, have you been understanding all this? Yeah. yeah. What do you think? Because you're now just three years here, and uh, has there been such things like this? You ever come across this ever before you came to America? Uh, well, <laughs> I, I can't tell you that, you know, because I, I don't think... In Puerto Rico, I saw, you know, in the street, here in Chicago, I saw, sometimes I go into, down the street, you know, I see 
one guy jump to other guy for for what for nothing because he think maybe the guy got some money you know and he jump to this guy and fight with the guy when he he get the money he got one dollar for what he fight for what for nothing eh? I thought I never saw that in Puerto Rico like you know my little brothers they they almost doing the same thing I used to do now so I think it just keeps on going like that you see your little brothers and they're watching you yes. and uh, the little brother the guy you're fighting his little brother is watching him yes. whether it be Italian or whether it be uh, Polish or colored or Irish yes. is that it yes. so don't you guys see any uh, any I what think, about uh, hmm? I think we won't have so much trouble with the Spanish neighborhood and those guys are growing up now they're, they're behave uh, be able to dis defend themselves because the uh, guys they, they grow up over here in this country they know how to speak very well English and I don't think they will have so much trouble you know? and uh, those guys will grow up over here and learn very good English and, and you know what be a good question what do you do what's your day like what I'd like what is your day like the time you get up in the morning, the time you go to sleep. Just in a turn, just the try to sort of create it, Vic. Uh, I get up in the morning, come to school, go home, and go to the restaurant. Stay there all day. You say you go to the restaurant. Yeah. This is a place a lot of your friends gather around, right? That's what the Latin Kings associate. King, Latin Kings. So what do you what do you do in the restaurant? I go in, sit down, goof around, play records. If some guy want to drink beer, we go drink beer. You know, just, just sit around all day, I guess. That's what I really call my, you know, like my home to me. You know. I'm there all day, I'm still all night too. After that, I just go home, sleep, next day the same thing. <laughs> what about you, uh, Heck? Well, mine's just like Victor. I, I, you know, I just get up, come to school after school, you know, I go home. And uh, sometimes, you know, right now I got an old jalopy, you know, that I'm trying to fix. It's got a big hole in the radiator, I could drown. And it's, uh, you know, we still have from my house to kill a couple of quarts here and then. Uh, take a ride around the restaurant, check the neighborhood around. So. <laughs> and I'll make it back to the, to the crib and go to sleep and next to the same thing. You like though you like to work around with automobiles. Huh? Oh, I mean, yeah. you like to fix cars. Huh? Well, I got mine. I'm trying to fix it. I said that I know how to fix them, but I'm trying to fix it. Yeah, I like to work around with them. You know, I got one that I'm playing to fix up a little. You you like to work with your hands? Yeah, as long as they don't get too dirty. You don't get too dirty. Yeah. Well, tell me, this is interesting. Yeah. Now, here's kind of what your day is like. It's a day. One day is the same as the next day. The center of your life then is the restaurant where the Latin kings get. What do you talk about there? What do you talk about? Uh, we, most of the time, you know, we just out there fooling around, doing something. I mean, you know, once we out there, we're doing something. We don't, sometimes, you know, when we're tired, we go and lay in the grass. Sometimes the cops come up and chase us, go around the block. Then they tell us to go home. We go around the, around the alley and end up in the same place. Now you're laying on the grass, you're talking, right? And the cops chase you away. Yeah, the cops tell us to move. And Why? You, well, they just don't want us to lay around. So, you know, they just tell us to move. And then when we move, we, we go around the back and come out the front again. And we're back in the same place. Then when they come in again, they tell us to move, we do the same thing until they get mad and take us in. Have you been, have you been taken in a number of times? Uh, Pretty good number of times. Do <laughs> you match Hector? Yes. Just about. <laughs> for what? For what? For what? I'm doing for what? Taken in for what? Oh, I've been taken in for assault, a lot of things, fighting, lottering. They just, you know, we're in a restaurant sitting during school hour and this cop named Mike the Cop, or he's always coming around, you know. You see, they ask you, you go to school, you say no, they'll lock you up. Then you gotta pay $25 and gotta go to court next day. When you find $25? No, you're bond. Oh, a bond of $25. Yes. Of course, you were truant. Is that it? 
No, because not going to school. If you don't go to school, you know, you're not supposed to be around there during school hours. And since we always hang around there, and the school's right across the street from Oh, me. I see. It's the, the restaurant's near the school. Yes, yeah, right across the street from me. So they don't want you around there because they think you're, they think you're going to make trouble at the school. No, they think we, we have bad influence, you know, upon the students, the you know. Kids. Yeah. They might be cutting school, and they think that we told, you know, don't go to school today and stay around here, you know. This kind of thing. Peter. And I like the pictures of you know, I can understand them better, it's in we have a sound outside we heard, the siren. When you hear that siren, remember we heard the siren just this minute, the second? What's your first reaction when you hear that fire. siren? Huh? Fire. Fire? What's your first reaction? Fire. Fire, so fire. <laughs> Trouble. Trouble. What's your reaction? Thank you. I think it's fire because the squad car doesn't have a siren. <laughs> oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I see the smoke in here, too. Huh? The smoke is over there. There is it. Wow, there looks like a big fire, by the way, as we're talking now. Or if not a stuffed chimney, but it's way out, big black smoke. Any of your families, do you ever live outside this island? I live outside of here. I used to live outside of this boundaries. I used to live on uh, Pulaski and North Avenue. And I, I just couldn't get along with the people there, you know. They were mostly Italians. I used to go to school with them. And I almost got chased home every day or something. <laughs> and I used to live in the South Side too with the colored people, but they never bothered me, you know. Well, let's talk about this a little. When you lived on the West Side, around Pulaski and North, you were chased home almost every day? Yeah, sometimes by the American people, by the Italians, you know. So I had never went to school, and uh, then we moved back over here. How about your mother and father? How were they treated by their neighbors? Well, I don't know, they just, nobody talked to them and they didn't talk to nobody, you know. I mean, they, they didn't want to try to act big or anything, you know, but they, that's the way they feel, the same way I do. No, I mean, uh, when they lived in Pulaski and North, did their neighbors, were their neighbors friendly with them? Well, they really weren't, you know, they weren't friendly toward them, but they weren't against them either, you know. Just, they would, I don't know, they, they never talked to each other. We never, we didn't live there very long. Well, when you were lived on the south side, in the Negro area, you weren't bothered, you say? No. I don't know, Puerto Ricans for some reason, I think I always get along with the colored people, you know. I used to have, I'm, almost all my friends were colored, you know. Oh, that's so? Can we talk about this a little? Because now and then we hear talk about, oh, uh, different minority groups. Like sometimes we say, the colored are anti-Puerto Rican, a Puerto Rican anti-colored. How do you find this? I think uh, that the Puerto Ricans and the colored get around uh, very nice. Because, you know, I, I, I had lived, you know, on the west side, and uh, I had a lot of friends there. And, we, you know, to me, you know, they were just one like me, that's all. And uh, I get along with them really nice. And uh, we have less problem with them than we do with the other people. So we get along with them all right. It's a question, then, of this outside world, of this world outside the colored and the Puerto Rican world. Or the world outside this boundary. Ashland, what is it again, this world? Ashland, it's Ashland Augusta, North, and Kessie. Ashland to Western, yeah. North to? It's Ashland. And to Western, at 1624 Ashland. West. Division, uh, California. California, and North to here. This is the world. Yes. There are other Puerto Rican areas in town too, aren't there? Very small, small. This is the big one. And then it's a question of, like this is a city within a city, or a country within a country. Yeah, see, because most of the people, you know, when they come from Puerto Rico, you know, they hear about division, you know, and they come over here to live in Division Street. And because they hear, you know, it's just like in Puerto Rico, you know. So they, they come over here instead of going to another place to live in. That's the way it's, it's becoming a little city within a city. One of the things can we uh, talk about, I'll turn this, let me turn this over just for a second. I thought if we had one last go round, asking each guy a certain memory that stands out in his mind, it doesn't matter what it is, something technical. Well, my memory uh, happened last year and it was a bad one because uh, that year uh, I had an accident with a shotgun and uh, I shot my right leg and I have to be wearing a cast and then brace and all this for about a year. And uh, I had to go through Christmas like this. And 
it happened so fast, you know, that through all the trouble I, I had to go through, you know, it's been uh, real bad. And uh, I don't want it to happen to nobody. It's, it's no good. Why did you have the gun? Well, <laughs> uh, we, was, we had some trouble with uh, another group. And uh, that night, we was getting ready to, uh, you know, have it out with them. And uh, I had a shotgun, 12 gauge, sort of. And uh, Victor over here was with me. And we was in the alley, you know. The, the shotgun was in the alley, so the president told, told me to go get it. And I told Victor to come along with me. Victor wanted to carry the shotgun, and I wanted to carry the shotgun. <laughs> At the end, we decided, and I carried the shotgun. So when I was going back in front of the school, uh, I was gonna hide it behind some bushes, so when I bent down to take it out uh, from my shoulder, uh, the handle on it was loose, and the handle stood up here and the rest of the rifle f uh, fell to the ground. When it hit the ground, it, it went off and shot my leg. And then since then, I was in the hospital almost for six months. Why did you and Victor want to, why did you want why did each of you want to carry the gun? What did that mean to you to carry the rifle? Well, it was, we have protection right there. <laughs> it was protection. You know, Victor wanted protection, I wanted protection, so it was fine, so, you know. Did it also make you feel bigger, too, maybe? Yeah, you feel bigger when you carry a shotgun, because, you know, ain't nobody going to stand up to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the kind I guess we wanted to carry a shotgun. Jose, what's a memory you had? Any kind? Any kind of memory? Yeah. Yeah. Anything come to your mind? Anything, good or bad, or... Childhood, anything. Well, all I can say is that I'm proud of being in Puerto Rican, and I have never had any trouble with any kinds of people. And I would like that to stay that way for the rest of my life. Victor, any thoughts? Incident. I just, I still remember the same day when Bones got, when Hector got shot. You know, I don't know. It was excitement all day and all night. You know, just. You know, we were gonna jam with uh, some Mexicans, you know. We, they're from 18th Street and we just all, always, we, we had this hatred between each other, you know. And I don't know, it's always been like that, so. And don't you get along with Mexican kids? Yes, yeah, some of them, but there's this one club called the Ambrose, you know. And they're from 18th Street and we just, it's like hatred between each other, like rivals, you know. Mm -hmm. We meet any place and we'll have it out right there, you know. You were saying what you remember best is the day that uh, that Hector accidentally shot himself, there was, that's the day you remember the best because the excitement of it, is that it? Yes. I know, I saw West Side Story. <laughs> I saw West Side Story and that's how I looked, you know. Just, you know, we were at the park and we, we messed one of the guys up so we thought that we were gonna come back that night. So we, everybody got prepared, you know. We had about, about how many guys? About 200? So you saw the movie West Side Story and then this made you seem like you were in this movie, like you were the sharks or the other guys in the movie, right? Yeah. In West Side Story. Because you were telling about your day. Your every day is the same as the next. The day you go to get up, you go to a restaurant, you ride around, you goof around, you go home, you go to sleep, right? But then this one day that was exciting. Yes. That's what you remember the best. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Harry? You got a memory? Any, maybe from Puerto Rico or from here, something good or bad, Try a memory, maybe Christmas or something. Do you have a memory? Well, what stands out in your mind most, one day at a time? Well, uh, I went to Latin King Hangout too, you know. I saw, I, all the time I was this guy with the guys, you know. Um, they, are, they are good guys. Some, some day, you know, they feel good, you know, and Sunday he came to school and, you know, they never make it trouble. I never saw it, they never make it nothing good, nothing bad, it's the same to everybody, you know, um, it's the same to everybody. You like being around the restaurant? Yeah, the I live in the neighborhood too, you know, and the guys, nice guys. The people living around me, you know, they good people too. I don't say nothing bad about the guy. 
I wasn't thinking about it, but I'm talking about do you have a, in your mind something, you, any one day in your life you found the most exciting, what was the most exciting day of your life? Do you remember? Well, Merry, no, in Christmas, you know, in Christmas, in, I was with this guy all the time, you know, um, like me, I, someday I go to, to the park, Wicked Park, you know, I was in Wicked Park, uh, I see one guy come f from me, you know, I don't know why, f they hit me, you know, I don't know why, and I tell the guy, why, why you hit me, and he said, you look at my wife, you know, and he's a big guy, you know, I, okay, you, you wait for me here, when I go to the restaurant for see the people, you know, my friends, they, they came, me in my back, you know, and tell me, oh, this is my hangout too, you know, and they hit me too in the hangout. <laughs> That's the thing you remember, this big yeah. guy came along, it was not a Puerto Rican, he hit you because he said you were looking at his wife. Yeah, that's right. But and then you went to this other place. Mexican. Yeah. He was a Mexican. Yeah. Guy. And then you went to the other place. Yeah. And they hit you there again. Yeah, because they, 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 they are Latin King too, you know. But I don't know the guy. <laughs> I never and saw the, before. This is the day you remember best. Yeah, and the, the last day in, in Division Avenue, I went to the to a restaurant, you know, to eat something, and I don't know what's happening over there, and I see the cab come from me, you know, the police, and they hit me. They and hit you too? Yeah, the cab hit you. Yeah, and run away, you know, I don't know why, why they hit me. Maybe the, maybe he think, and the one guy ran, you know, full around over there, but I don't know why. This is the other day. <laughs> it's a big day in your life. <laughs> Carlos, what yes. is a memory you have? Well, the most exciting day of your life? I don't got nothing to say. I only would like to say is, I would like to go back to Puerto Rico, you know, because I, I like better Puerto Rico now, you know, because I remember the beautiful things over there. And I would like to save money to go with her back. That's only. That's the only thing I have to say. That's all. <laughs> you hope someday to go back. Yes. Um, stay forever. I don't want to come back anymore. You know, I, I like here, but I don't like the the problems. You know, with the Puerto Ricans. You know, in Puerto Rico, you don't got that problem. You know. If you fight with a Puerto Rican over there in Puerto Rico, that's a fight over there. They don't say you don't speak Puerto Rican or something like that. That's all. Rafael, you've been silent all this time. I don't have anything to say. 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 Y que, que no te recuerda, tú sabes, que lo tiene en la mente todavía. De, a, hace tiempo, entonces, algo que te pasó, algo malo, algo bueno. Algo bueno que te gustó mucho. Bueno, well, you know, with the school. Hizo, hizo en uh, Ohio Street, you know, this, this game, Italian game. I don't know if that, I don't know. En other time they used to see me because I'm a Puerto Rican. I, they used to come and say, are you Puerto Rican? Well, I used to say, yes, I'm a Puerto Rican. What's wrong with them, man? And they come and hit you for nothing because I'm a Puerto Rican. And I don't know why, you know, those guys do that, man, because, I don't know, you know, I'm a Puerto Rican and then they they just come and hit you for nothing. They say, you know, they come with a little guy and then that little guy, you know, say, that guy hit me. He's a Puerto Rican and then you, the guy come, hey, did you hit my little brother? And I told him, no, I don't even know that, I don't even know that's your brother, and I don't even know you. Oh yeah, and the jump, uh, of a fight guy, jump and hit me, man, for nothing. Would you like to go back to Puerto Rico? Carlos said he would. Oh yes, I would like to go to Puerto Rico too. It's just a question of job then, isn't it? It's a question if you had a job there, isn't that yes. it? Yes, yeah. that's happened to me too. If I, you know, if I know I can have a job in Puerto Rico, I'm going back. That's all. So yes. here we are, just sitting around talking. Did you want to say something, my friend? He just uh, came here. Yeah. Huh? Let's see. A memory. What's your name? First name. Is Benjamin. 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 We're talking about what is the most exciting day of your life. Do you remember one? 
many trouble, you know? The only thing I don't do is fight and I get along with everybody. And speaking about Puerto Rico, you know this guy? He said he would like to go back to Puerto Rico. I would like to go too. Because before it wasn't so good, but now it's coming a, like a city, like a, a good town, you know? And Wait, in San Juan? Yeah, in all the town. Where I used to live, Ponce, San Juan, all the town. It's coming up now, good school. You learn more, you know, than before. That's all. <laughs> so we go back to eat. I think now we'll go eat. Anything, anybody want to say anything else, Victor or, 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 or Hector? Anything else before we sort of adjourn for now? Any thoughts, last things you have to say? Hector? The only thing I could say is that I've been with the Latin Kings for two and a half years, and I think I'll be with them two and a half years more. <laughs> Why only, uh, that's, you, in, you think of two and a half, what, what happens after that? Well, after that, I think I'll settle down. And you'll settle down with a job somewhere. How do you feel? Carlos and Benjamin were talking. They'd like to go back sometime, too. I came out here when I was around uh, three years old, and I don't know too much about Puerto Rico, so I don't... So your life was here? Yeah, my life was here. And someday getting married. Uh, someday, you know, I might go there for a visit and come back. But, uh, but I don't have no, nothing planned yet. But two and a half more years, the Latin Kings. You think the Latin Kings will be here? Is Latin Kings institution now, you think, Victor? Pardon me? Latin Kings, would you say, as an institution now, it's here to stay? Corporation. <laughs> <laughs> so, Victor, what are your thoughts before we say goodbye now? Well, I don't know. I, I'll be with the Latin Kings three years, and I'll, I'll still be there. You know, I know. You know, down in my heart, I think that I belong in Puerto Rico. But since I was born here and I grew up here, you know, I don't know too much. I like to take a trip over there, you know, and see how I like it, you know. But there's no place like my hometown. <laughs> so there are really two worlds in your heart. I mean, where your people came from, what you hear about, but where you live, and this is your home here. Yes. So it's cool. And you hope to be a social worker. Yeah, you think maybe Kings. you think maybe your work as a member of the Latin Kings will help you as a social worker? Yeah, because I think to be a real good social worker, you would have to not just know how to read, you know, not go to college and everything and know everything that you read in a book, but from experience, you know. Because if you have experience with kids your own age, when you grow up, you know, you know how they felt when you were small, you know, and how they feel, and you know. So I really think that it depends on the experience and not the education. I make a very good social worker. But thank you very much, gentlemen, Hector, Benjamin, uh, Jose, Victor, Harry, Carlos, and Rafael. I got it all. <laughs> and I hope someday there can be that big, that big peace conference we talked about. If you can, if all the leaders of Latin kings, the gay lords, the playboys, the cobras, the vices, how many other... Name a couple of more groups. Simon City, Chai West, Domino's Four Aces, Hosting Park. You know how many how many groups are there in the city? Any idea? About I don't know about three hundred. I think. Really? Imagine if three hundred of the leaders got together, sat around at a big conference. What do you think would happen? What would happen? It's the last. This is the last question. What do you think? What do you think? Well, I think you know there'll be a a little jam before the meeting comes on, and after the meeting. <laughs> and then, uh, after you talk about the conference, it just go back to the same way as it was. Same way? Yeah. What do you think so, Victor? I think if they have a conference, they'll just be wasting their time. Because it goes into here and they'll come out to the other side, you know. And just They won't get nothing accomplished by that. You ever get the United Nations? You don't think it'd work out that way? Because that's not doing too great either. Come and think about it. May I come in? Yeah, it's all over. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, gentlemen.